Hi, I just want everybody to know that I just finished translating this Vietnamese curriculum of Marxism-Leninism. I spent three years translating this, so it's pretty much a big deal to me, and it's a pretty good book. You can get it in print or as an ebook at lunaoi.com or banyanhouse.org. Hi everybody, I'm Luna, welcome back to Luna Oi. We are here at Banning Square in Hanoi, Vietnam. Today, this square is most famous as the site of the mausoleum of Ho Chi Minh, but in addition to being the final resting place of Uncle Ho, this was also the birthplace of the independent nation of Vietnam. This is a story of the declaration of independence of Vietnam, one of the most brilliant diplomatic maneuvers in modern history, and a bold step forward for our revolution. It was here in 1945 that Ho Chi Minh read the Declaration of Independence of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Dear compatriots all over the country, all people are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you happen to be from the USA, then you may find the words of our Declaration of Independence very familiar. That's because the Declaration of Independence of Vietnam was very intentionally based on the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America. A lot of Americans have come to the misguided conclusion that Ho Chi Minh was paying homage to American freedom and democracy in basing our Declaration of Independence on the American Declaration. But the real reasons why our declaration was based on a USA declaration are a lot more complicated and a lot more interesting. At face value, it might look like Ho Chi Minh was paying tribute to the USA. But if we seek a comprehensive and historical perspective, we can see that Ho Chi Minh was actually playing a game of 40 chess with the West to push forward our own socialist revolutionary movement in the geopolitical arena. So let's take a look at the historical context of Vietnam's Declaration of Independence. In the early 1940s, during World War II, Vietnam was in a terrible predicament. The French colonial administration, which had enslaved the people of Vietnam, yielded our country to occupation by Japanese fascists. The Japanese terrorized and starved the Vietnamese people, murdering and enslaving us, and stealing all our food, forcing us into famine and desperation. In response, Vietnamese communists formed a force known as the Vietnam Độc Lập Đồng Minh Hội, the League for Independence of Vietnam, or Viet Minh for short. Viet Minh guerrillas fought fiercely to seize weapons and food from Japanese fascists and to liberate and provide food and security to the Vietnamese people. To their credit, the USA did lend some aid to the Viet Minh to fight against the Japanese. Throughout the fighting, Ho Chi Minh met with American military officers to express Vietnam's desire for independence, to speak out about the brutality and atrocities of French colonial rule, and to thank American forces for sending weapons and providing training in the fight against the common enemy of the Japanese Empire. Many American officers had sympathy for the people of Vietnam and wanted the USA to sign with the Viet Minh against the French, and even befriended Ho Chi Minh, who wanted to build a peaceful and productive relationship with the USA as he steered Vietnam towards freedom and independence. Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh leadership knew that the USA was emerging as the leader of the Western world, and they worked tirelessly to try and establish good relations with the USA military officers who had come to Vietnam, hoping for peaceful recognition of Vietnamese independence from French colonial rule. Unfortunately, the U.S. government sided with the French at the close of World War II. Once the French came to reoccupy Vietnam, the USA immediately sided with the colonizers and began supplying aid, advice, and equipment to the French, betraying the people of Vietnam and setting the stage for decades of conflict to come. Now, it's important to note that Ho Chi Minh was very familiar with the contradiction between the American government's claim of loving freedom and liberty and the brutal realities of American racism, imperialism, and mistreatment of its own people. In 1912, Ho Chi Minh traveled to the USA and lived in New York and Boston. Starting from that time, Ho Chi Minh began writing and speaking about the hypocrisy which existed within American power structures. The light above Liberty's head spreads across the blue sky, 
but at the foot of the statue, black people are being trampled on. So is the fate of women. When will black people be equal to white people? When will there be equality between peoples? And when will women be equal to men? So Ho Chi Minh was not naive about the USA. He had witnessed and experienced racism and tyranny firsthand while living in the United States, and had written about American atrocities many times before he experiences with American forces during World War II. So it's in this context that the Declaration of Independence of Vietnam was written. Ho Chi Minh had to contend with deep contradictions of his own, knowing full well that the USA was a place of racism, imperialism, and colonial conquest in its own right, while simultaneously hoping this emerging superpower might help his people to finally achieve freedom and independence, the very ideas which the USA purported to stand for. In studying the USA, Ho Chi Minh found that the American Declaration of Independence and its chief principle of all people being created equal were compatible with the aims of the Viet Minh. But more importantly, that these family awards of American ideology might serve as a powerful weapon of diplomacy. Remember also that Ho Chi Minh was a poet. He had written many volumes of verse and poetry, including his famous reason notebook filled with powerful poetry which contemplated contradictions and realities of the life of a revolutionary struggling for freedom such as this verse. Thy body is in jail, but thy spirit never. For the great cause to prevail, let thy spirit soar higher. Being a poet, Ho Chi Minh understood the power of symbols and poetic gestures, and in choosing to use the American Declaration of Independence as a template for the Vietnamese Declaration. Ho Chi Minh knew that he would be brushing the USA with a choice before the whole Western world. Either the USA could accept Vietnam's declaration of independence, which was framed in words echoing the USA's own hallowed ideological document, or the USA could reject our plea for independence, and in doing so, openly display their own hypocrisy and prove to the world that the words of the declaration of independence didn't have any practical application in the real world. Unfortunately, if there is one thing that the bourgeois state that is the USA has proven in the time which is it has existed, is that all the idealistic and beautiful language of equality and liberty and freedom brings completely hollow in practice. And the USA proved this to be the case in casting aside Vietnam's declaration of independence in favor of continuing the tyrannical rule of French colonialism. And we all know what was to follow. Even after France withdrew from Vietnam, the USA came in to occupy and directly commit war crimes and genocide against the Vietnamese people for many years to come. And this is a context in which Ho Chi Minh framed our Declaration of Independence. Every murder of a Vietnamese civilian, every attack on the freedom and independence of the people of Vietnam punctuated the hypocrisy of the USA and showed us how little respect the USA had for their own Declaration of Independence. If the government of the USA truly embodied and cared for those values which had been framed in their own Declaration of Independence, then they would have granted the people of Vietnam our own freedom and independence. But the decades of brutal war against Vietnam after we declared our independence instead show the true colors of the USA, exemplary of butchery and genocide of a regime of hypocritical demagogues. And this, to me, makes the Declaration of Independence of Vietnam stand as one of Ho Chi Minh's most brilliant and tragic works of poetry. He used the flowery ideological language of the USA's founding document to give the USA a poignant choice, and the USA chose oppression and domination over freedom and independence, putting the contradictions embedded in the foundation of the United States of America on stock display. To prove this point, now let's listen to Ho Chi Minh's call for a national uprising against US imperialism on July 17, 1966. Dear compatriots, the savage imperialist USA has invaded our country. They wanted to rob our country from us, but they have lost. They stormed the South with 300,000 crusaders. They nurtured a puppet government and a puppet army to be a tool to harm our people, to betray our country. They used barbaric means of war. 
such as chemical toxins, napalm, and so on. They applied the policy, burn everything, kill everything, destroy everything. They wanted our compatriots in the South to yield to them by their war crimes. But under the firm and clever leadership of the National Liberation Front, the people and the army in the South united together and bravely fought back. And we had glorious victories. And we are determined to fight until we truly win, to liberate the South, protect the North, and reunite our motherland. It is well known that every time the U.S. is about to step up the war, the U.S. invaders shout it from the rooftop, a lie that they want peace and negotiation in order to fool the world and blame Vietnam and claim that we don't actually want to negotiate peace. Hey, President Johnson, answer this question in front of the people of the United States of America and the whole world. Who actually broke the Geneva Agreement? It is an agreement to protect the independence and sovereignty of Vietnam. Is it the Vietnam Army that invaded your country and killed your people? Or is it the U.S. troops that invaded Vietnam and killed Vietnamese people? Listening to these words from Ho Chi Minh, it is clear that he was well aware of American hypocrisy, that the USA does not honor its own supposed values. Freedom and equality for a few but not for most is the material manifestation of the USA empire. Your empty words were thrown back at you with every rape, every drop of napalm, every bullet, every bomb. So yeah, the words of American Declaration of Independence were nice, and Ho Chi Minh knew that they were nice and powerful, and he gave the people of the USA a choice to stand by their own words or to fling their own declaration of independence into the mud as they tremble over the rights of a sovereign people standing for our own independence on the other side of the earth. In offering the USA the choice to honor stated values or sink to colonialist lows, betraying darker ideological currents running beneath the surface. Ho Chi Minh wrote poetry into the pages of history. Ho Chi Minh knew the truth about the empty symbols of the USA. He knew that America's flag waved with 13 stripes, one for every plundered colony of all the countless displaced natives, and with 50 stars for every stolen territory. That this flag which was painted on planes that spray Vietnamese babies with napalm and Asian orange and was teached on the uniforms of gang rapists and murderers who came to plunder and pillage under the cynical guise of freedom and democracy. But what makes this poem of history especially tragic to me is that the USA did have a choice. They could have chosen to stand by their own declaration of independence in honoring and standing by our own. The USA could have heard Ho Chi Minh's desperate pleas on behalf of the people of Vietnam and taken a stand for freedom and independence. But sadly, that wasn't the choice made by the government of the USA because ultimately, the United States of America is not a land of freedom and independence, but a brutal empire built on genocide, plunder, and slavery, as Ho Chi Minh said. America claims to be the most equal and civilized country in the world, but more than 18 million Americans are tortured like slaves just because their skin is black. America claims to be the richest country in the world, but in America there are more than 2 million people who have suicidal thoughts because their lives are too miserable. On January 9th, 1964, President Johnson said 20% of Americans live in extreme poverty. America claims to be the freest country in the world. The U.S. Constitution begins with the sentence, all people have the rights of equality and freedom. However, today, more than 20 million black Americans are still tormented as slaves. They are neither free nor equal. The black Americans participated in the anti-war movement against the Vietnam War. Of course, the Vietnamese people support the black Americans in demanding freedom and equality. Although our skin color is different, the Vietnamese and black Americans are against the common enemy, the evil American empire. And we are sure that the righteous will win. The people of the South of Vietnam will definitely win. The black American brothers will definitely win.